three rounds remain in the 2023 Canadian Rally Championship. Which means it's time to head to Lamal Bay, Quebec. Both the overall and two-wheel drive championships are still wide open. And that makes victory a must. Win here, and the championship becomes yours to defend. Falter, and you'll be struggling to catch up. The contenders know this. The fans know this. Add in skill testing conditions and courage testing speeds. You have a fall classic where anyone could spray champagne. Oh no, not seeing oil pressure on the gauge either. We need to stop. Yep. Rally Charlevoix starts now. The lights are bright and the fans are out in force in front of the Fairmont Le Manoir Richelieu, marking the start of Rally Charlois. The deep field of 36 teams rolling through the ceremonial start on Friday night all know this is just a taste of the fan appreciation they'll experience this weekend. This rally is filled with spectator access points, and the rainy weather won't dampen their spirits. It will, however, make the stages tricky. Covering a total of 220 competitive kilometers, the rain will make the sandy forest roads slick with mud. Contrast that against numerous tarmac sections, and the drivers will have to find the right balance between speed and caution to win here. The Canadian Rally Championship is presented by Subaru Canada. The competition kicks off with two passes of the in-town Lamal Bay stage, a tarmac warm-up in front of the fans. The defending champs, Jerome Mayu and Philip Poirier, have had nothing but trouble this year, but are hoping to turn things around this weekend. They managed to win here last year despite a gearbox malfunction, which was key to their title. Having lost the points lead to Jean-Sebastien Besner at Rally des Fee with a crash, Alexander Moreau is looking to leapfrog his rival back into the top spot. He and co-driver Ian Guité have their work cut out for them, but are fast out of the gate, winning stage one. Besner and co-driver of Joyal respond on the second pass of La Mal Bay, winning stage two. The difference between Besner and Moreau is measured in tenths of a second, but Besner's understanding of the limits of his new car is increasing with every kilometer. Added to the mix is the wild card, Jason Bailey. He and co-driver Shane Peterson debuted their new Fiesta RC3 here last year and drove it to a solid second place finish. 2018 championship runner-up Simon Vincent has been focusing on track racing lately, finding success in the Micra and Centra Cups. He and co-driver Hubert Goudreau are masters of risk management, which could serve them well in the tricky forest stages. Ahead of both Bailey and Vincent through the first two stages, Marc Bourassa and Elise Reset are always contenders for the podium at any rally they enter. The LeBlanc brothers missed the last round at Rally des Filles, but are back and looking for the two-wheel drive class win here this weekend. The 2021 overall champions have the commitment required, but they will have to face off against the championship leaders, Chris Greenhouse and Ryan Scott. The Americans are always fast, and this year they're playing the long game. They don't need to beat the LeBlancs this weekend, but they're going for it anyways, winning the first two stages. After two stages, Moreau and Besner are basically tied, less than a second between them. Mayu rounds out the top three, Greenhouse leads LeBlanc and Royer in two-wheel drive. The in-town warm-up complete, the teams head into the woods to start the first forest loop with the legendary Bataram stage. You'd think that the track racing specialist would make time on the tarmac stages, but it's here, on the muddy gravel, that Vincent starts his climb up the leaderboard, jumping up two places by the end of stage three. Mikhail Arsenault and Amélie Boulanger increase their pace now that they're on a more familiar rally surface. They also move up two places by the end of the first pass of Bataram. Sebastian Clark's skill has never been in question, but to say his car has been unreliable would be an epic understatement. DNFs have knocked him out of nine of his last ten attempts to finish a national rally. He and co-driver Yannick Moren are hoping Charleroi will be the end of their bad luck. Back with the race for the lead. Moreau has opened up the taps and wins stage three, now leading by 6.4 seconds. But it isn't Besner directly behind him anymore, it's Mayu. Besner struggles with traction on the first pass of Bataram and falls behind the defending champion, but only by a handful of seconds. Mayu and Poirier are on fire, 
showing the combination of speed and risk management that earned them their first title in 2022. The risk management half of that equation is becoming more critical as the rain increases, reducing traction even further. Bailey and Peterson would love nothing more than to be in that fight as well. They move past Barassa into fourth, but can't yet catch Besner or Mayu. Both LeBlanc and Greenhouse know that the in-town stages were just a warm-up and that the real battle for two-wheel drive supremacy starts here on stage three. The LeBlanc brothers are confident that the slick conditions will negate the power difference between Greenhouse's fire-breathing Dodge and their R2 Fiesta, making it a straight contest of skill. But before it can shake out in stage times, Greenhouse's engine spins a bearing. Uh-oh, 40, three left plus. What are we uh-ohing? Engine power. Lost boost, three left plus, keep out, up exit. Oh no. Uh, I'm not seeing oil pressure on the gauge either. We need to stop. Yep. Pull over, out over here, over here, so that they yeah. can set up. Yeah, it's smoking. Is it? Yeah, see it coming out of the hood. Right. I'm gonna go around a triangle back. Okay. Yeah. With Greenhouse out, Kurt Duddy and Danny Houdon move up into second place in the two-wheel drive class. Vincent Trudel and Michelle Miller have their sights set on an overall podium this weekend and are being coached by the Grand Master himself, Antoine Lestage. They might get their chance to spray champagne with sudden drama at the top of the leaderboard. Allez vraiment bien là, t'es capable de rouler en avant là avec Basnay avec son nouveau char plus royal. C'est vraiment glissant, je me suis fait comme avoir un peu là, j'ai perdu la grippe. Puis euh, j'ai euh, freiné, quand la grippe est intervenue, j'ai accéléré, puis j'ai accéléré trop vite. Il y a un refuge de sorti, puis j'ai fait un tonneau, fait que c'est fini, là, euh, pendant un pare-brise, puis tout. On va voir, là, mais je pense pas de redécoller. Moreau isn't the only driver to suffer in the first loop. Les derniers kilomètres de Bataram, à un moment donné, on sentait que l'auto commençait à être plus euh, imprévisible. Puis, euh, dans les derniers virages, là, le, le, le braquet du, du, du choc en bas, la main, là, Complètement cassé, déchiré en fait. Elle tenait encore un petit peu. On a réussi à terminer le stage. Mais durant le transport, là, elle s'est décomplètement. Fait qu'on a enlevé le, le choc au complet. Mais euh, c'est fini pour nous. Hein. We're only a handful of stages in, and the action has just begun at Rally Charlevoix. Welcome to your 20 minute high intensity workout. Pick up the cadence. Regulate your breathing. Get ready for a climb. Let's go. Okay, push it on the flats. Pick a number and get after it. Recovery in three, two, one. The all new WRX. The rain continues to fall at Rally Charlois as the teams head back to service after a dramatic start to the rally. After five stages, Besner and Joyal have a significant lead over Bailey and Peterson. Vincent and Goudreau are only 21 seconds further back in third. The LeBlanc brothers lead Duddy and Houdon in two-wheel drive. The roads are very, very slippery. Sometimes we feel that driving on snow, a very sandy road, and with the rain, it makes the road condition very difficult. So unfortunate for Alex and, uh, and uh, Jérôme. I mean, those guys are very tough to beat, even with uh, driving this car. But uh, we did, uh, I would say, uh, quite a good loop. Uh, Bataram uh, was a tough stage, it's 35K, it's a long stage. Yeah, we're in the lead, so I need to be smart, manage. Uh, happy but disappointed for the other guys. I stayed smart, you know, I don't have the fastest car. I'm not the fastest driver. Uh, Jerome and, and Moreau, like there go, those guys are fast and crazy fast. You know, I could see their lines and I'd come into a corner and be like, hmm, where did they break? And it's like, Ooh, they didn't break. I'm gonna break. And so, you know, keeping it clean, and that's the, the way we gotta get through the weekend. We're not gonna catch Besner on speed. We gotta keep Simon behind us, and we're gonna be fine. First loop went well. Uh, Bataram, first stage. Uh, very tough. Almost took a uh, puncture of the car. Uh, after that, we push in the two last stages. Actually, we're heading for two uh, tarmac stages, so I don't think that uh, is going to matter mo uh, much. Although, after that, it's going to be the night stages, you know. Uh, the notes have to be pinpoint perfect, and uh, we have confidence in the notes, and uh, we're going to push because it's uh, my uh, strong point, uh, the night uh, time uh, stages. For us, it went uh, pretty good, but uh, 
the sandy condition, I wasn't really ready for it. It's really, really different than uh, the ground at Beli Shala because when you came in a corner in really sand, we lose so much speed and it's hard to get out with the good speed. But uh, still, uh, Greenhouse exploded his engine, so we won every stage by a good margin. So in the two-way drive is good. In the overall, it's a little bit uh, harder. Yeah, it went super well. We try to avoid you know, the pitfalls, the downfalls, but uh, you know, at Defi, I learned how to drive faster, and now I'm going even faster, but I gotta like avoid that trap to keep pushing. But I'm, I'm comfortable now. I'm actually driving fast, so I'm, I'm glad. I think I'm just gonna back it off a little bit. I don't know, I'm just gonna 85, 90%. Uh, it's been a tough loop, honestly. Uh, we lost all the brakes midway through Batram, the long, long stage. So we had to do 17K with absolutely no brakes. So we lost about two minutes there. And uh, we had a front top at failure as well on that stage. So we've been kind of limping the car back to service. Michel's doing a tremendous job on the notes and we have Antoine Lestage here this weekend with us doing some coaching. So we've worked really hard making sure everything was right and despite all the problems in the car, we did manage to post two fit or all fastest time uh, in the last two stages, which I'm the first surprise about. So hopefully you guys can put the car all back together now so we can go and fight back some, uh, some more positions. Just trying to find the right speed, preserving the car, and we'll see at the end of the day how we are. Service complete. The teams will do it all over again. An in-town loop for the fans, followed by some tough four stages. The action continues at Rally Charleroi, round five of the Canadian Rally Championship. The teams are about to hit the stages again at Rally Charleroi. The midday in-town loop is lined with spectators, ready for the action to kick up a notch. Jason Bailey and Shane Peterson are ready to rip, but have accrued a 40-second penalty for leaving service late, dropping them to third. They're smart enough to know that you can't make much time on stages like these and play it smart to get to the next forest loop. They make it through the two in-town stages without losing any more time. Bailey's penalty bumps Simone Vincent and Hubert Goudreau up another spot to second overall, proof that their strategy of maximizing consistency is paying off. Although Vincent came in second place in the 2018 championship, he's yet to win a national rally outright and would love to add that to his resume. Rally leaders Jean-Sebastien Besner and Avange Joyal won't make it easy for him. They're equally skilled at risk management and have used the strategy of staying smooth to great success in the past. Having started the rally in ninth, Mikhail Arsenault and Amélie Boulanger are up to fourth overall and are opening up time on the rest of the field. The two passes of the Claremont stage gives all the teams the chance to impress their fans as the spectators get up close to the action. Then it's back out into the forest, and the conditions continue to worsen as the rain won't quit. Vesner and Joyal know that with the lead they've built, they can afford to trade some time in favor of a safer pace. Unfortunately, the road surface is even slicker than Besner anticipates, behaving like wet ice, and it costs him. The ditch excursion damages the car's driveline and tears an oil cooler line. They are out on stage eight, and it isn't certain yet if they'll be able to rejoin the rally. This promotes Bailey and Peterson up a spot, the slightly more nimble RC3 less affected by the loss of traction. But it isn't long before they face trouble of their own. One of the wheels has come loose and has damaged the wheel studs. They will try to tighten the wheel with just three lug nuts, but they lose even more time to Vincent and Gaudreau. Vincent an expert on ice and snow, also knows that the night stages are one of his strengths. As he passes Bailey, he knows that now he has a solid lead to manage. The gray light of day fades away, plunging the rally into darkness of night but that isn't slowing Arsenault and Boulanger. They post the fastest overall time on stage eight, now solidly up to second place overall.
The LeBlanc brothers also increase their pace on the night stages, minutes ahead of Duddy and Houdon. The LeBlancs also seem to thrive in the dark and are no strangers to slippery conditions. They briefly move up to third overall. Clark and Marin have been keeping it between the ditches, but the car is losing power, overheating. They will make it through the loop to the end of the day, but they have a lot of work to do tonight to get the car back in shape. The LeBlancs lose time on stage nine, conceding third place to the hard-charging Trudell and Miller. Despite some fogging of the windshield, they're posting consistently fast stage times. The coaching from Antoine Lestage is paying dividends. Despite their best efforts, the wheel hub fails on Bailey's Fiesta, forcing him to get towed back to service. They will work deep into the night to repair the car and rejoin the competition for the second day, but the penalties knock them well down the order. Amidst the attrition, Gabriel Monette and Hugh Bergeron have managed to stay clean through the rally thus far. No small feat given the conditions. As they pass Bailey on the stage, they move up into fifth overall. Duddy and Houdon are far too smart to play games in the night and in these conditions, happy to maintain second place in the two-wheel drive class. It's amazing that any of the teams make it through these stages at all. After a grueling 10 stages, Vincent leads Arsenault by almost 90 seconds, with Trudel in third, also leading production all-wheel drive. The LeBlanc's hold fourth and the two-wheel drive lead with a big margin over Duddy. Seem everyone has problem. There is big, big water puddle, so it was really slippery. I didn't knew uh, sand could be slippery, but finally it is a lot. So it was just about survival. It's good that the day is finished. I called it that uh, it was in the night stages that everything was going to happen, and it, it did. We took advantage of that. Now uh, we have a lead about uh, 1 minute 20, uh, 30. And if I lose it, it's because it's going to be on dry, not in the dark, on wet uh, conditions. But I'm glad uh, with what we did today. There's another day of rallying coming up after the break. Welcome to your 20 minute high intensity workout. Pick up the cadence, regulate your breathing. Get ready for a climb, let's go. Okay, push it on the flats. Pick a number and get after it. Recovery in three, two, one. The all new WRX. The rain is finally tapering off as the teams line up to start the final day of competition at Rally Charleroi. The Canadian Rally Championship is presented by Subaru Canada. Only 20 of the 36 teams have made it through to this point, several of them earning restart penalties. Leading the teams into the stages are Simon Vincent and Hubert Goudreau, one of the few teams to come through the first day of competition without incident. With the conditions finally improving, Vincent knows that Arsenal will be charging hard trying to catch him. The obvious play would be to keep a safe pace, carefully bleeding off some of the 90-second gap. But Vincent shifts strategy, planning to send a message to the rest of the field, and sets a blistering pace through the first stage of the day. For their part, Mikhail Arsenault and Amélie Boulanger are no fools. They also made it through the first day's chaos clean and refused to get baited into a costly mistake. They know that the gap to the car behind is over two minutes which gives them breathing room. They concede a handful of seconds to Vincent, but open the gap to third by another 20 seconds on stage 11. Vincent Trudel and Michelle Miller have problems of their own. The strut bearings have been an ongoing issue with the car. They've already replaced them twice at service. The right front fails on the first stage of the day. A fast roadside repair with a pair of locking pliers and a hose clamp gets them through the loop, but Gabriel Manette and Hugh Bergeron are right behind them in fourth. 
A minor off-road excursion helped Manette lighten the bodywork a little, but this team has been clean otherwise. Trudel's suspension trouble allows Manette to close to within 20 seconds, overtaking the LeBlanc brothers for fourth. Despite dropping one position on the overall leaderboard, the LeBlanc brothers still have a huge lead in the two-wheel drive class. Over the first two stages, they will add another 50 seconds to that gap. The LeBlancs have made it clear that they're using 2023 to test and tune the new car and plan a run at the two-wheel drive championship in 2024. Kurt Duddy has had great success at many rallies by playing it smart, so it's no surprise that he refuses to throw it all away trying to chase LeBlanc. He and co-driver Danny Houdon focus on clean, fast lines through the remaining stages, which include yet more shifts between gravel and tarmac. Both Jean-Sebastien Besner and Jason Bailey took advantage of the rally restart rules to rejoin the competition for the final day, but with Besner's issues coming earlier, he missed more stages than Bailey. Bailey and co-driver Shane Peterson quickly moved back up into sixth, but the gap to fifth is almost nine minutes, and even Bailey isn't crazy enough to go for it. Besner and Joyal are further back in 14th, well out of the points. Trudell and Miller's emergency roadside repair has held together, and they managed to fend off Manette's attack to take home third overall and the production class win. Arsenault and Belanger maintain a smooth and fast pace to the finish, earning second place, well-deserved. But it was Simone Vincent and Hubert Goudreau who had the winning strategy this weekend. Knowing exactly where to push and where to be cautious has earned Vincent his first ever national win. Vincent, Arsenault and Trudel make up the podium. Monette comes out on top of his battle with LeBlanc, who in turn wins the two-wheel drive class. Although both Moreau and Besner had disastrous rallies, Besner manages to extend his lead by one point, while Chris Greenhouse still has a substantial lead in the two-wheel drive class championship despite his DNF. Making it through an event like this is a great accomplishment. Standing on the podium is nothing short of brilliant. First national win for me. All the team worked so hard uh, the, to prep the Dakar, especially my father, Sylvain, which is a rally grandmaster. Uh, all credits to him for the preparation of Dakar. I'm really, really happy. I'm really relieved because this morning we had to attack uh, just to make it sure that nobody attacked us. Incredible feeling. Now I'm glad that uh, I have uh, my name uh, alongside my father of uh, national rally drivers uh, that I have a national win. Ça fait longtemps qu'on l'attendait cette deuxième position là, surtout après euh, quatre ans d'absence. On est bien content du retour. Là. Les planètes étaient alignées là, ça. Deuxième, on est bien, on est bien content. Puis merci à ma copilote. <rire> <laughs> we worked so hard for it. The team it was amazing. We broke so much stuff. Like there's not one service we came back with a good car, and they made it work. They gave us the holiday chances that we we could get, and uh, yeah, hard work paid off. An overall podium with a production four-wheel drive car. I can't be happier. Uh, with the morning stage, uh, we finally managed to kind of easily win the, the class uh, with a 10 minute lead on the second in two wheel drive. We're not the fastest on the field, but the smartest, I will say. So we also finished fifth overall on 36 cars. So it's a kind of really good accomplishment for only our second rally in, in that car. Call it luck, fate, or rally spirit. Unlike in years past, nobody leaves Rally Charleroi in command of the title race. The points gap is tight going into the last two rounds of the Canadian Rally Championship, and the excitement only goes up from here. <laughs>